Lord Jesus Christ, Messiah, Emmanuel, light of the world. Shine your light on us tonight and every moment for all of our lives and for eternity. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, everyone needs a little light at lots of different times. Different light for different things. I got all kinds of lights up here. Uh, different lights for different things. I, I have a time when I need light many evenings. My wife is one of those people who wakes up at, uh, if she's sleeping in, she wakes up at 5 a.m., we'll put it that way. Uh, she wakes up early, gets started on her day. So it means that by about 9.30 at night, she starts to shut down. So she's usually in bed and asleep before I am. So when I go into the bedroom, I don't just like flip the light on and go, hey, honey, because she's out, right? There's a light that's just right for it. It's actually my phone. But I don't even use, like I don't even go to the, to the flashlight part. I just touch my screen and there's like the little glow, like when your calendar's there or whatever, just that little glow. And that's enough light to kind of go in my room quietly and then to get to, the, to our bed. And then with that little light, I can take the small square blue pillow that's on our bed that I'm not allowed to put my head on and sleep on. That's a decoration. Take that and put it over here. Then I can take the medium pillow. This is just on my side of the bed, by the way. The medium pillow, I can put that over here that you can't use. Then I can use the, the large pillow and put that over here. And then I can use the light to pull back the quilt. And then I can see the pillows that I'm allowed to use. And then I, then I can kind of you know, put my phone down and go to sleep. It's just enough light for that moment. That's the perfect light for that moment. There's lights for lots of moments. You lose your keys. Maybe you're in your car and it's nighttime and it's dark and you can't find your keys. And so you know, a nice little flashlight, perfect, right? Look through your purse, look on the floor, find your keys. That's good. Uh, you're going to do a hike in, uh, in many beautiful places around Monterey here. And if you're going to do a hike in the evening or in the morning, I got one of these. You stick it on your forehead. It's a very attractive look, by the way. But uh, you, know, you put this on your head and then you got, wherever you look, you got some light. That's great. I mean, is there, there's a, there seems like there's a light for just about everything. If, if it gets dark here and I need a little bit of light, I can just flip the switch. That's a nice, if you stare at it, that's all you'll see for the next two days, so don't stare at that. <laughs> but there's, you know, there's, there's, were you staring? Some of you are going, I can't see. But, but there's, there's, there's light for lots of things. It seems like there's a light for everything. But if you go a little deeper, is there a light for everything? How about, is there a light for those people who are dealing with isolation and loneliness and just feel absolutely closed off. I've talked with a lot of our folks online. We have about 90% of our church still online. And I've talked with a number of you who are in your home. You've not been out almost at all for eight or nine months. You've had things happen. You can't have kids or grandkids or family near you. And you've got you know, other circumstances that make it really dangerous if you got COVID. And so you just feel isolated and alone. Is there a light for that? Is there a light that, that lights your life and your heart and your home in those moments? Is there a light for times of turmoil and confusion and when, when things are polarized, when people can't talk and people can't get along and even family members won't talk to each other because of conflict? That, that's the world we're living in more and more. Is there light that can shine into that and illuminate in those moments? Is there light for moments of pandemic and health fears where, where you're, you're, just, you're just saying, I don't know what's coming next and it's, it's, there's so much happening and there's so many questions that aren't answered. Is there light that can bring you peace in those moments? Is there light when you're walking through life, just kind of living your life and, and you have to make a decision? It's a financial decision. It, it's, it's a relational decision. It's, it's a, a life decision, a health decision. And, and you, feel like, you feel like you're blind. You feel like it's dark. You feel like you can't see and you're trying to figure out where to go next and what to do, but you feel like you're stumbling around. Is there light that can illuminate the path in front of you and show you where to go? Is there light at the end of a year like 2020? A light that could shine into 2021 and bring hope and a sense of expectancy? Is there light that can, that, can, that can shine far enough down the road to give you a sense of what lies ahead and give you an encouragement in your soul? Is there light for, I mean, these, these lights are great. This light's wonderful, and these work for lots of things. But is there a light for the deepest things and the darkest places? And the answer is yes. There is for all those and more. His name is Jesus. He is the light of the world. 
And this Christmas season, we've been talking about Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus as the Messiah King who, whose presence makes your heart sing and celebrate. We've been talking about Jesus, the baby born in the manger. But tonight, and, and you're in the final service of the day, this is our third service, but it's going to get a little bit darker and the, the lights all around, all these trees. You couldn't see this at the first service because there was no clouds, the sun was out. But now you know, you, there's something about Christmas and lights, something beautiful about this time of the year. But each of these little lights at Christmas time really should just direct our hearts to the one who is the light of the world, the one who's brought light here for us. And so in the Gospel of John, we hear the story of Jesus. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, in chapter one, it's John talking about the coming Messiah, the coming Savior, talking about Jesus. And he's calling Jesus the light of the world. In John 1, 4, John writes, in him, in Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then in verse 9, John gets back to the topic of light again. And he says, The true light that gives light, that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. In that beginning of John, we see John talking about Jesus. And it's one thing for John to point to Jesus and say, he's the light of the world. It's another thing for Jesus to say of himself, I'm the light of the world. It's like somebody saying, saying you know, she's really quite a good athlete. It sounds different than her saying, I'm an amazing athlete, right? It's different if, if, if somebody says, yeah, that guy's really handsome, than that guy's saying, by the way, I'm very, very handsome. You following me? It's different, it's different. And so John has said he's the light of the world. But now in chapter 8, Jesus is talking. Look at John chapter 8, verse 12. If you have, if you have your Bibles at home, it'll be on the screen on the, if you're at home. But in John 8, 12, we read this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. If you walk with me, you'll never walk in darkness. That's powerful. That's amazing. And it becomes more powerful when you realize where Jesus is when he says this and what happens in that place. When Jesus speaks these words, it's, it's, it's the, the festival of tabernacles. And the festival of tabernacles, people would come to Jerusalem. So now Jesus is in Jerusalem. He's in this courtyard in, in, in the temple area. Now in that very courtyard, a couple things happened. The first day of the Feast of Tabernacles and the first night as it got dark, they had these four massive, massive candelabras. And they would light these things and they would just go ablaze. And they'd keep them lit all night till the next morning. And there was so much light that they said it would not just flood the courtyard, that light would flood all of Jerusalem. Now here's why it's hard for us to understand that. We flip a switch and lights come on. In the ancient world, there was no light. When it was dark at night, it was dark. I mean, it was pitch black. You'd, ha you'd have the stars, and you'd have a candle or maybe a torch. That's it. So, so, so in, in, the, in the Feast of Tabernacles on that first night, when they lit these four massive candelabras, and they went ablaze, that light filled all of Jerusalem. They said that for miles away from Jerusalem, you could look and you could see the city glowing from the light. So Feast of Tabernacles, they lit, lit, the, lit those lights. They did it in this particular courtyard called the Courtyard of the Women in the temple area. Well, where's Jesus when he speaks these words? He's in the temple courtyard, the same place they had those candelabras. When is it? It's the Feast of Tabernacles when that happened. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's a bold claim. As a matter of fact, the people in that, in that courtyard would have either said, wow, he's someone incredibly special, or wow, he's out of his mind, because what Jesus is claiming is beyond our comprehension. Jesus was clear that he is the light of all the world. Jesus didn't say, I'm the light of this courtyard. He didn't say, I'm the light of Jerusalem. He didn't even say, I'm the light of this region. What did he say? I am the light, what? Of the world. That is a bold Claim. So look again with me at, at John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world, speaking of himself. Then he speaks about people who believe in him. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. 
He says, you follow me, you won't walk in darkness, but we'll have the light of life. Now, what we have to understand also is in the ancient world in the first century, when Jesus is speaking these words, most of the people in that courtyard, they knew the Old Testament. That's the first two thirds of our Bible. They knew the Old Testament and they knew that all through the Old Testament, it talked about light, that Yahweh, God was the light. The Lord God, Yahweh was light. They knew that. In Psalm 27, 1, they would have heard these words many times. The Lord, Yahweh, the Lord God is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? They would have known the prophecy of Isaiah in chapter 60, verse 19, where Isaiah writes, The sun will no more be your light by day, nor the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Yahweh, the Lord God, will be your light. They would know of Micah 7, 8, where Micah writes, Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Again and again and again. The Old Testament says, Yahweh, God Almighty, is our light. And now Jesus stands in that same courtyard at this festival where they remembered the light of Yahweh. And he says, I am the light of the world. That's a claim that you can't look the, way, the other way and ignore. What is Jesus claiming? He's basically saying, I'm divine. I am Yahweh. When you see me, you've seen God the Father. He said that kind of thing again and again and again because that's exactly who he was. He was Emmanuel, God with us. So if we follow Jesus, then we will never walk in darkness. Jesus says, I'm the light, but if you walk with me, you'll walk in my light. Listen to these words again from John chapter 8, verse 12. And I want to focus on the last few words of this verse. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. He speaks of himself. I am the light of the world. A bold claim. Then he says, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. You walk with me, you'll never walk in darkness again. But you will have the light of life. You won't just walk in the light, you will have the light. And the light will emanate from you. That God's light will shine from you and through you to others. If we follow Jesus, we will have the light of life. It will be in us. It will fill us and it will shine through us. And then Jesus goes on later on in John chapter 8 in verses 31 and 32. We read, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching... You are really my disciples. The word disciples means follower. He said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my followers. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, this light of Jesus, it's not a physical illuminating. It's an illuminating into life, into all of life. It's his presence with us. And and then then if if you know the truth, that truth will set you free. The light of Jesus gives us the ability to see the truth with clarity. When we're walking through life, we have a hard time seeing where we're going. I don't know if you've ever been somewhere where it's really, really dark. If you've been backpacking or in the mountains and there's cloud cover and night comes and you don't have a flashlight and you literally, I mean, the, the old saying, you can't see your hand in front of your face, right? I mean, you literally, you can't, you put your hand right here, you see nothing. Or in your house, if the power goes out, and you don't have a candle or a flashlight nearby or a phone, right? And so for a moment, you try, have you ever tried to move from, from even like five or 10 feet when it's really, really dark? You don't just do this. You don't just kind of go, stroll along. Oh, no problem. I'm I'm confident. How do you move if it's completely dark? This is how you, this is how you, just, if you've never done it, try it sometime. Turn off the lights tonight and try to get from one point to another. You'll start doing this. You'll go, and you'll start, even if you know there's nothing in front of you, you can't see. So you say, well, maybe in the 10 seconds as I turn the lights off, somebody hung something right up here and you start like just acting kind of weird. Like you, because you feel like there's something there. You don't walk with confidence when you're walking in the dark. You're not free to move around. You can walk in freedom in Jesus Christ. And so uh, when you walk in the light of Jesus, what happens is the bondage of this world and the bondage of the things that, that come against us begins to break, up, break down and melt away. If you live in bondage to fear, if, if fear just rules your heart and rules your life, and you walk in the light of Jesus and the truth of Jesus, that fear begins to melt away and you begin to walk in new confidence. If you walk in the bondage of guilt, guilt and shame paralyze. Every one of us, if you, just, if you could just record our five worst moments from our past and thought that's going to be shown to everybody, every one of us would have enough guilt and shame to paralyze us. 
But Jesus says, I leave that in the past. You come to me, you live in my life, uh, you live in my life and my light, I will wash that away. I will deal with that. And you can walk in confidence and truth and walk in my light. That's why in the Bible, there's a guy named Paul who wrote more books in the Bible than anybody else. Paul wrote more books in the Bible than anybody else, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And you know what Paul was doing before he became a Christian? Before he began writing books of the Bible inspired by the Holy Spirit? He was murdering Christians and destroying churches. And some of you say, wait, wait, a guy who was killing Christians and destroying churches wrote books in the Bible? Yeah, more books in the Bible than anybody else. Paul actually said, I'm the worst of all sinners. But you know what else he said? If God could use someone like me, he can use someone like you. And guilt and shame in the light of Jesus wash away. Not because we aren't guilty, not because there's nothing we can be ashamed of, but because in his light and his presence, we see he's making us different people. Bondage to sin and temptation. The sin and temptation that are out there for all of us in this world. In the light of Jesus, we see the path to walk and how to walk in new ways. So here's a question for you. And ask yourself this. How can I live and walk in the light of Jesus today, every day, and forever? I mean, how can I live in this light and walk in this light today and forever? If Jesus is the light of the world, if I walk with him, and if I'm his disciple, if I don't walk in the darkness... And if I, in turn, can have the light of Jesus in me and shine through me, how do I live in that light? Because in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says something amazing. It's staggering enough that Jesus would say, I am the light of the world. But in Mark chapter 5, verse 14, here's what he says. If you become his follower, if you put your faith in him, he says, you are the light of the world. Excuse me? (laughs) You are the light of the world. Why? Why? Well, because just like the moon reflects the light of the sun, we reflect the light of Jesus. And if you're a follower of Jesus, and if you walk in his light, his light shines in your life and on you, and it shines off of you to others. And the way you live and the way you interact with other people shines the light in the presence of Jesus. How is the world going to know that Jesus is real? One of the main ways is through the light shining off your life, if you're his follower. So I want to challenge you all year long for 2021, but start with the next 36 hours, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And say, how do I shine the light of Jesus? Here's a few thoughts. Extend forgiveness. Is there someone who's wronged you and you have not yet forgiven them? You want to shine the light of Jesus? Make a decision to forgive that person. And right now you're going, I know who that person is, and no, <laughs> not going to happen. I mean, some of you in your minds, I'm, I'm not reading your mind. I'm just telling you, I'm a human being. I get it, right? I mean, for, for some of us, it's like, yeah, that, what's the next option? <laughs> Let me opt out of that one. But, but, but you want to shine the light of Jesus? You forgive others the way Jesus forgives you. That will shine his light. You want to shine the light of Jesus? Practice hospitality. To people who are hurting and broken and forgotten, reach out to them. Do you have a neighbor this Christmas season that's isolated? You can't pop by their house and drop in and sit with them, but what can you do to extend the hospitality of Jesus to show his love to that person? Extend kindness and celebrate kindness. We're living in a world that just doesn't have a lot of kindness, but you carry that in your heart and say, what's the kind thing? How can I, and let's say, God, let your light shine through how I treat this person, how I respond to the situation. I was in a store uh, recently. I actually went into a store to buy something. I didn't do it online. I actually bought something in a store. It still happens. And so I went into the store, and I was in line, and there were two people in front of me, and both the people in front of me like, had coupons and had like, things to talk about and weren't quite ready when their time came up. And, and, and I'm behind these two people watching this, and the salesperson at the, at the thing is, was so kind and so patient. And I watch this and I'm thinking, this is somebody who just will succeed in anything they do with that, that kind of a heart that kind of, in our world today. So after these first, and I'm standing behind these to be waiting in line thinking, come on, move it, get out of here. And I'm, I'm the pastor and I'm thinking, I wish I was as kind as this guy is, right? He's like teaching me about kindness. But when they, they were both done and gone and I got up and, and I said to this guy, I said, you know, I said, in our world today, I don't see a lot of people in retail that have the kind of patience and kindness that you do. And he said, oh, thank you. He said, yeah, I, he said, that's... Uh, I, retail's a new thing for me, but I worked in an area in the past that you just had to be kind. I said, well, I think retail's one of those places too, but it's just not there much anymore. And I just, I commended him, and it meant so much to him to have somebody acknowledge that he was being kind. Notice it, see it, live it out. You want to show the light of Jesus. Guard your mouth. 
It's not enough just to have a, I mean, we're all wearing masks these days, but actually, you know, there's times to actually keep your mouth closed and not say anything. One of, one of the greatest ways I've learned through the years, at least people have told me, is one of the best ways I can show Jesus is just to keep my mouth shut sometimes. Um, I, I make my living talking, and sometimes I say too much. Sometimes I say, you know, I've, I've got to learn at times just to not say it. And this might be a time to show, show God's presence and light by simply not saying what's on your mind that wouldn't be an edif- edifying thing. And then to speak blessing. Can I, can I encourage you? You want to show the presence of Jesus. Speak words of blessing to people when you have the opportunity. Speak of, of his goodness, of his kindness. I was in a, a little Mexican restaurant in Huntington Beach where I grew up. And I was a pastor at this time. This is years ago, but I was coming, I was working on a sermon, so I was having something to eat and working on a sermon by myself. And as I'm walking out, I'm, gonna, I'm going, there's a woman on the other side of the counter, a young woman, maybe late, late teens, early 20s, and she's going to ring up my food. And so I give her, the, give her the bill, and I have my Bible tucked under my arm like this as I'm checking out. And she sees my Bible. She says, she says oh, is that a Bible? And I said, oh, yeah, that's the Bible. She said, are you a pastor? Which I thought was kind of strange because you don't have to be a pastor to carry a Bible. But I, I actually said, well, I, I actually am. And she says to me, she goes, I like pastors. And I said, great. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and she looks at me and she says, she says, will you bless me? And it's kind of like I'd never had that happen before. You know? She says, will you bless me? What do you say when a complete stranger looks at you and says, will you bless me? So I said, sure. And she does this. She's so sweet. She closes her eyes, and she's behind the counter, and they're like, the register's over here. She goes like this. She closes her eyes, she goes. And she leans as far as she can over the counter. So I don't know if I'm, like, if I'm supposed to, like, you know, I, I'm not quite sure, but I didn't, feel, I didn't really know the routine. So I, I, so I just stood, I stood there, and, and I, I just looked at this young woman, and I said, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And there was just this sweet, beautiful moment. And when I finished, she looked at me and she said, thanks. And I said, you're welcome. And I walked out into the sunlight of Huntington Beach. And and as I'm walking out, this is what struck me. How many people do I encounter every day who don't have the courage to look and say, will you bless me? They wouldn't dare. But their heart longs for someone to look at them and say, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. Lift up his countenance and give you peace. You don't have to use those words. That's actually Aaron's blessing from the book of Numbers. That's the ironic blessing. But, but you can just say, God bless you. May God's hand be on you. We can bear the light of Jesus. As a matter of fact, what I can tell from the gospel of John, what Jesus is saying is, he's saying, I am the light of the world. If you walk with me, you'll never walk in darkness and you will have the light of life. So share that light everywhere you go, especially at Christmas, but all the time. Look for ways to shine the light of Jesus. And the first step in that journey is actually putting your faith in Jesus. You can't shine the light of Jesus if you're not walking in his presence. And so so I would say tonight, it's Christmas Eve, the celebration of Jesus' birth. I want you to know If you're a follower of Jesus, he is the light. You walk in his light and you're called to shine his light everywhere you go. That's his call. But if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, his arms are open and he welcomes you. One of the things I love about Jesus is he's very polite. He doesn't just grab you and say, you're becoming a Christian. He doesn't do that. He says, I gave my life on the cross. I gave you everything. I opened my arms to you. Come to me. And he lets us decide. And so if you want to become a follower of Jesus, his his story is so simple. The story is this. There is a God who made you, who loves you, who is the light of the world. His name is Jesus. He came among us. We're separate from him, and we walk in darkness because we've sinned. We turn away from him. We don't live the way we should. But he loves us so much, he's like, I don't want that to continue. So he came to this world. That's Christmas. That's his birth. He came to this world and lived a life with no wrong, no sin, and he was nailed to a cross to pay for my sins and yours and to take our punishment and to take our shame on himself. And he did that on the cross, and he died. And three days later, he rose again. And he offers his grace to everyone who will receive it. He offers his love and his forgiveness, his friendship to everyone who will receive it. There's never been a human being in the history of the world 
who has come to God with a sincere heart and said, I'm sorry for my wrongs. I want to receive Jesus. Jesus, will you forgive me? There's never been a single human being where God has ever said no. He always says yes. He's longing for that. That's why he came. He shines his light so you can see who he is. From that point, the decision is ours to receive his gift. And so I want to pray right now as we close our time for everyone who has faith in Jesus that you will shine his light, that you will be his light in this world. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, that you could right now, this Christmas, say, Jesus, I put my faith in you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as the... Lord, what a beautiful evening. As the sun is setting and as we're closing this Christmas Eve time together, I pray with all of those who've put their faith in you. Maybe it was when they were five years old like my wife, Sherry. Maybe they were a teenager like I was. Maybe it's like my dad in his 80s who waited till the last month of his life but finally said yes to you, Jesus. For all of us who have faith in you, Jesus, help us see you as the light of the world. Help us know that you shine your light every step of our lives. Let us see where you're leading us and help us to then reflect your light everywhere we go. And Lord, I pray with those people right now, people in the courtyard, people in their cars, people at home, online, who are saying, you know, I started this service just to kind of spend some time with friends or enjoy a kind of a theme of Christmas, but, but I didn't know this would be the day that I would say yes to Jesus. But if that's you and you want to say, I want to receive Jesus, will you just talk to him right now? Will you just say, dear Jesus, thank you. I recognize now that you are the light of the world. I call to you right now, Lord Jesus, and ask that you would forgive me. Wash away all my sins and all my shame and all of my guilt. Thank you that you died on the cross to pay the price. Thank you that you rose again. And thank you that you're here right now. I accept your forgiveness. I accept your love for me. And I commit to follow you and take your hand and walk with you all the days of my life and forevermore. And if you prayed that prayer, I want to assure you, if you prayed that from your heart to God, he's been waiting for you to ask him to forgive you. And he delights in this decision you've made. And his light's going to shine in your life in fresh new ways. It's going to amaze you. It's going to astound you. And if you prayed that prayer, I want to invite you. If you're at home right now, there's a phone number on the screen. And just text the word believe to that phone number. If you're in the courtyard in your car, on that sheet that we gave you, there's a phone number and the word believe. Just text the word believe. And what we'll do is we'll follow up. We want to get you a Bible. We want to get you a nice new Bible. And we want to just say, how can we help you on this new journey of following Jesus and walking with him? And maybe you're in the courtyard or in your car or online and you're saying, I'm not a Christian yet and I'm not quite there yet, but I got a lot of questions. Would you text the word wonder to that exact same number, the word wonder, and we'll follow up and just kind of walk with you as, you as you're trying to figure out the whole Jesus thing. We'd love to come alongside of you and encourage you any way we can. And Lord Jesus, for all of us who this Christmas know you, we say, Jesus, light of the world, continue to shine. Lord, our world needs your light to shine. We need your light in our lives. And we dare to pray that you will shine your light through us to be a blessing to others. We pray this in your name, Jesus, and for your glory. Amen. I want to invite you to stand with me, if you can stand. And we're going to sing Silent Night. And I'm going to come and just give a word of blessing and to send you out with little instructions to make sure we leave following our protocols here. But will you, from your heart, just sing this song as worship to the Lord.
blessing, I want to give you a few instructions just to make sure that you, we follow the protocols. So as you go from this place, as you leave this courtyard, as you head out in your car in a moment, as you wrap up online, may you recognize that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. May you see his light shining in your life. And may you boldly, wherever you go, whatever you do, let the light of Jesus bounce off you, reflect off you, shine through you wherever you go. And may he receive glory. Amen. Merry Christmas. So in just a moment, our ushers are going to come and dismiss you. Wait to move until they dismiss you because we're following the protocols and we've not had any problems and we don't want to. As long as we need to do this, we want to be ready to do it. And as the ushers are coming to dismiss you, a couple quick words. The next two wor- next two weeks... We're going to be online only. So for people that come to the courtyard, that come in their cars, don't register. We won't be here the next week. After that, second week of January, we're back in the courtyard, parking, and online. We'll have great services all online the next two weeks. So I want to invite you to be part of that. Also, if you need prayer, on, your, on the screen there, you'll see uh, information, contacts, and share your prayer needs. On the sheet we gave you, there's information for prayer. Pass your needs on to us. We'll pray for you. And if you're new at Shoreline Online, just... Uh, respond to that text uh, text number there and we will follow up with you if you're here in the courtyard and you want to go to the balloons back there where Patty is balloons are always fun Patty's always fun if you're new go by her she wants to give you a little gift and thank you for coming answer you answer questions you have about Shoreline Church and so we're thankful for you joining us and God bless you Merry Christmas and our ushers will come and dismiss you now and then you head out and have a put your mask back on before you head out and have a great evening God bless you